So, back on your foam roll. If I want this time, I can lay down. And what I'll do to put myself in position is I'm just going to grab the foam roll, lift, and then roll myself up. There we go. Now, I can pick the side I, I want to press on. I feel a little bit more tightness on this right side. So I'm going to prop myself right there. Now, just like before, my, my body's got a little bit of a twist. My spine has a little bit of a twist. I'm really pressing more into my gluteus maximus, I think maybe a little bit of medius uh, to the side. So I'm going to grab the foam roll and push it just a little bit down. And then pull it just a little bit up. And I think the down feels better to me, so I'm going to do that. Then with that combination of down, I'm going to see, do I want to pull to the left or the right? And I think the right feels better, so I'm going to try to do both. I'm going to roll the foam roll down while also pulling rule right there to the right. Doing both at the same time. My left hand is pushing the foam roll away. My right hand is pulling the foam roll into me. So I'm sliding my body over that way. Right in there. Then if I want to rest, if I want to roll a little more lateral, so long as it's comfortable and I don't feel like I'm going to fall off. Ooh. Lots of options here. Now I'm very clearly on the side at that point. I'm going to scoot this just a little bit higher. Roll on my gluteus medius, hooking my legs together for some support. If I want to lengthen the legs, I can. That's going to make it more intense. Ooh. Now, these sorts of things, what I want to tell you is as a yoga teacher, what I found out was at first, you think, well, wait a second, this isn't yoga. This isn't, this isn't strengthening anything, but I have to use body weight and support to be able to move myself around so I build some strength. Eh. Two, there's something that happens when you send a unique input into your nervous system. Your nerves seem to create a situation where the muscle is softer and pliable you get more muscle control. What it means is I can do a series of these, like triangle pose, warrior two, after I've done some hip and leg work, and the poses feel completely different. Now, I'm gonna roll a little bit now to the left, just like the other side. So, I don't want you to knock this, it's like, this isn't yoga. I want you to explore range of motion and be mindful. I'm going to scoot myself a little bit lower. That feels better to me. Right in there. Ooh -wee. If I want to lengthen, I can. This is working all around my sides, all around my abs, strengthening all of this. And breathe. I'm going to bring the feet together and allow my legs to open. I've got a little support from the roller there, so I just wanted to hang out for a second. This feels nice because I was using all of these muscles to support, now they're just resting. If I like the pressure down along my sacrum, we're going to alter this. So my sacrum is pretty solidly on the roller. I'm going to lift it just a bit higher. I lifted myself up. I'm going to find that center spot right at the small of my back. I say the small of my back, but it's really, it's above the tailbone on the sacrum, not in the lumbar spine. Then I'm going to slowly lift my legs up and back. I'm pulling the toes back and open, creating some length on those hamstrings, but I'm relaxed here. I'm going to put my hands behind my head. Now, what happens if I start to alter this? You're thinking about like splits? 
But if you want to focus more on the leg that's down or the leg that's up, you can toggle back and forth. Oh, now what happens if we roll with a twist here? And the opposite side. Big, long lengthen. And to the left now. Oh, right in there. Your legs can be as bent, as mobile as you want. Does not matter. You're just exploring your own range of motion, exploring your own breathing as you go. All of this is really going to help you with those standing yoga poses, all that stuff with your legs. We've also worked, what, this is our fourth day. We spent the first three days, we did a lot of strengthening stuff. Even I had just a little bit of tightness. This helps unwind some of that. Oh. And back to center. Legs up. stand my foam roll up and out of the way. And this time we're going to see what we can do with the fronts of the thighs and the quads. I'm not going to do any deep compression with the foam roll on these, but I am going to show you how to use your hands and arms to deliver a little bit of pressure um, into that area. Just again, something as I think of as a supplement. It's allowing you some additional tools to play with as you work on yourself. Don't feel like you're ever stuck with specific tools. You can always use whatever is available to you and that's easy to access. So, I'm going to come and sit. I'm going to face the camera a bit more here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull uh, this right leg down and extend this left out. This gives me this open space here. Now, when we started, we talked about the adductors. The adductors, if they're tight, do what? Hey! Kind of pull the hip up, right? There's a lot of factors that go into hip mobility. I don't want you to have any judgment about that. In fact, if you want to deliver pressure but your legs are up like this, you can't really, because your leg wants to move, right? You can take one of your blankets or a towel. You can fold that guy or fold it in half. You can put it like this. Because now I'm taking the pressure off, but I can start to use my forearm, oh, to roll this guy out. Now, it's a little bit more difficult when I go down towards the groin to be able to get pressure in here. But I want you to understand, could you push with an elbow? Yes. But I suggest you start with something broad, like the forearm. Just roll that out. It's going to be easier for you if you find out that that referred pain is coming towards this lower section because it's easier to get to. Now what happens if I find a spot? And I'm rolling out a little bit more towards my quads, a little bit less to the adductor. And I go, man, right there. Ooh. Now, what happens if I grab that with my ulna? That's that bone on the outside of my forearm here. And now I'm going to grab at the wrist. I'm going to shear out towards my knee. Oh, right there. Or back towards my hip. Which one of those do you prefer? I like towards the knee. Now, now that I've got out towards the knee, do I want to shear to the posterior? Oh to the front. I'm going to go to the posterior, right there. This is a way of working on yourself. Could you build up to an elbow? Yes. Go slow. What feels intense, but not painful? No pain. No pain, no pain, no pain. Don't want it to be painful at all. But if I hook right in there, and then I, okay, for me, I want a cross fiber. Right, oh, right towards my knee, right there. Oh, oh, oh. Whew, that's sharp. Wow. Now, if you felt like this was the right tool, but it's too sharp, you felt like, hey, the elbow, it's like, for some reason, that elbow gets right in there, but it's just a little too much. What do you do? Ah. You put the towel over it, and now you can lean in with that elbow, but now it's dampened. It's not quite as sharp. It's the same pointy tool to hook right, oh, right there. And I can still shear out towards the knee, in towards the hip, back, 
Ooh, wherever that is, just to help open that up. Now, I don't think of this as like you're sculpting your body. What you're really doing, you're ready for this? So, generally people would say that yoga makes you more flexible. Eh, the science, I don't know if it really shows that. Are you ready for me? Just, just follow me for a second. Don't argue with this part. Just listen to this. What it really does is you put yourself in stretches. You put yourself in a position to open up your body. You put yourself in a position to lengthen a muscle. What happens if I over lengthen my hamstrings? My body goes, hey, hold on. You're going to hurt yourself. Your body's used to a normal range of motion. When you go towards an end range of motion, your nervous system has to induce calm. So what do you do? You put yourself in that end range. It feels intense. You breathe, and your nervous system says, oh, oh, okay, that's safe. And lengthens and allows you to go a little bit deeper. So from the outside, you look more flexible, but what you're really training isn't your muscles. You're training your nervous system. You're training your nervous system to let go. Part of the way that I retrain my nervous system when it comes to soft tissue is if I find an area like my adductors that are giving me a problem, is I'm going to search through the tissue around the adductors to see if I feel anything that feels dense, tense, or tight. And what I do is I put a stimulus into my nervous system. Oh, right there. Out towards the knee. In my case, I think I'm going to go a little bit back. And what I do is I go, hey, nerve, what's going on there? And they're like, hey, man, what's that? You're trying to induce calm. What I do find is if you're a yoga teacher, yoga practitioner, somebody studying with me, I can help you with your mobility more rapidly doing soft tissue techniques than just yoga. What people think of as stretching has very limited therapeutic benefit. I'm not saying it doesn't have any. I'm saying it has very limited therapeutic benefit. I can usually help people in their yoga practice much faster by helping them as a teacher or a practitioner with soft tissue work to be able to help them open up specific areas to remove pain. Once pain is removed in that young person's adductors who messaged me on Twitter, what happens? Oh, well, they can do the poses without fear, without their nervous system telling them it's too much. Now, I'm working through here again. Oh, right close to my knee. I'm going to come down. I want to see if I can find... Well, there is a little bit there, but I don't think I'm as bad. Let me go right in the... Oh, there we go. Right in the middle. I'm catching a little bit of my quad on this side, but it's also a little bit of adductor, kind of in between those muscle groups right in there. I'm going to hook down and then shear out towards my knee. Yeah. Now I can shear to the front or the back to see where the guys uh, definitely to the back. Right. Oh, right there. Oh. Ha. Ah. My classes are essentially like yoga therapy on steroids. The students come in with a certain pain and I go, where? And then we start working and see if we can figure out how to help them with that in a short amount of time. It's sort of fusing the massage and body work I've done over the years into yoga in like a seamless way. I'm going to check our time, see where we're at for our hour class for today. Let's see, where are we at? Where are we at? What time is it? Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and lay down in Shavasana. If you want to put yourself on the foam roll just to open up your chest again, feel free. It's totally fine. I'm going to bring myself back into position on my back. I'm going to take my bun out so my head can lay down mostly flat. Top of the mat. And I'm going to walk the shoulder blades back and down, back and down, back and down. I'm going to press the shoulder blades into the floor while lifting my bottom and rolling out my lumbar spine. Now I'm going to lengthen both legs down below me, just a little bit wider than hips width distance apart. I'm going to scoot that foam roll out of the way so it doesn't touch my foot. There we go. If you need to bend your legs, feel free, whatever makes your 
Low back feel better so you can relax, release, unwind. You can scan your body from the feet all the way up to the top of the head. Where do you feel tension? Where do you want to hold your focus? Breathe comfortably and calmly. If you need to relax your jaw, you can always exhale out the mouth. <sighs> if you feel like you're holding tension anywhere, hold your focus on that area. Maybe gently squeeze the muscles there. Hold it for a breath cycle or two. And then on the exhale, can you just let it relax, release, and unwind? If your mind wanders, just always return to your breathing, always return to your breath. Relax your feet, relax your lower legs, relax your thighs and hamstrings, relax your gluteals, relax your abdomen and low back, relax your upper back, thoracic spine, let your chest fall open, relax your arms, bicep, tricep, forearm flexors, extensors, palms, carpals, relax your cervical spine, your neck, your jaw, your face, your temporalis. Relax all of your tissue, all at once. And you can wiggle your fingers and toes. Your eyes can open. You're going to roll onto your right side and push yourself up. You can turn around to seated, face the front. Legs crossed. If you always cross your left leg in front, cross your right leg in front. We try to develop a little bit of symmetry from left to right side. Back of the palm is going to be on the knees. Pointer finger and thumb will touch. Long spine, a little bit of retracted neck, just to open and lengthen those vertebrae. Crown of the head lifts up and out through the ceiling. And palms at your chest, prayer position. Big in breath, long spine, lifting through the crown. As you exhale, you can bow, thanking yourself for your practice today. Thank you for your time and attention. You can shimmy through your hips and kind of stretch through your gluteals. And namaste. Thank you guys so much for the practice today. We'll be here again tomorrow. I think we'll take off on Sunday, but I'm probably going to keep uh, just working through things. If you have questions for me in video, you can message me on Instagram or Snapchat or Twitter or wherever else. 
Feel free to ask me questions. If there's something you want me to help you with, I'm very happy to do that. It's easy for me to deliver video in this form to be able to help you as much as I can during quarantine time. So thank you guys for tuning in. I'll see you tomorrow, probably about 4 p.m. I'll put up notifications on my social media. And these videos will be available after the fact on my Facebook page or on my YouTube channel. So I'll see you guys soon. Thank you again, and keep the faith.